Welcome, folks. This is us now on live for our S3 uh, options evening. Thanks for joining in. Uh, this evening, you've got myself, Mr. Monaghan, Mr. Reid, who's the deputy for third year, and Ms. Gordon, who's going to be signing uh, for our deaf pupils and any deaf members of the community that are watching. So welcome. Uh, the purpose of this evening is to go through some things in regards to second year, uh, the options process, and to have a wee bit more detail and insight as to, to how that relates to you and your child. Um, if you have got Twitter, it would be good for you to sign up to the school's Twitter feed, um, and you can do that to get lots and lots of new information about what's happening in the school. So the Twitter feed for the school is at Calderside AC. This is the best way for you to keep up to date with information that's coming out from the school, including invitations to events like this. If you need to get in contact with myself directly, then my email address is on the screen just now. It's gw 9 Monaghan James at glow.sch.uk. And if you've got questions about S3 and the options process beyond, then Mr. Reed's email address is gw07 readblair2 at glow.sch.uk. Okay. Now, we know that many of you are going to be watching this at home just now. Some of you are in about a tablet or, or a computer. If you've managed to get it set up on your TV, it would be great to see people taking part. So you can send your messages on the Twitter feed. And if you put the wee hashtag S3 options, then we can start to collate some of those images uh, as we go through. Uh, this is our very, very first time trying something like this at Calderside. We hope you find it useful. We hope that a lot of your questions are answered. But if you do have any questions, then what you can do is you can put some questions in the comments section of the video feed. And what we'll do is we'll address them at the end, uh, one at a time. What you might find is as you're going through, a question springs up. But by the time um, you get to the end of, of Mr. Deed's presentation, some of those questions might be answered, but that's OK. We'll look at them uh, one at a time at the end. OK, folks, so I'm going to just shut off Mr. Reed just for a wee second. He's going to be back in a wee second to go through the options. He's disappointed. He's raring to go. Uh, and I just wanted to talk about a couple of things in relation to S2. So, so bye for now, Mr. Reed. OK, so we know that things have been challenging this year. We know that your young people came into school in August, all set up for, for a very, very exciting second year. And with the restrictions that we've had in the school and beyond, it's maybe not been the year that they've wanted. We know that things are difficult at home and we would like to offer our sincere uh, help in any way that we can. One of the big priorities for the school uh, and all schools across the country is making sure that pupils take care of their health and well-being. This is not just their physical health, it's their mental health and also their social health. So what we would like to try and encourage all kids to do is to make sure that they take the opportunities to go out, get some fresh air, get regular exercise and make contact with their friends and their family. Remember that you can socially distance and go for walks with one other person if you're over 12. And you can also, you know, still phone and video chat and all, do all those things that the technology allows. Um, so that you're still making contact with people. It's really, really important that above all else, we take care of um, our mental health, uh, our physical health and our social health. That's a number one priority. Um, we know that things can be difficult also at home just now. We know that parents are doing a wonderful job in supporting young people and making sure that they're getting everything that they need to make sure that they're flourishing. Uh, and sometimes parents need a wee bit of extra help as well. So there's a link that's on the screen just now for youngminds.org.uk. And it's got lots and lots of great resources in terms of how you can support you and your child, especially during lockdown. We know that many of you are homeschooling, you're juggling work, you're juggling family life and everything else that goes along with it. So try and be kind to yourselves. Try and reduce the stresses and pressures that you're experiencing at home. And if there's anything that we can do to help and support with that, please contact. OK. Now, one of the things that this school has been pushing quite a bit recently is remote learning. Remote learning is the term, the catch all term for all the learning that's taking place outside of the school. So that for many of your pupils or many of our pupils, your children, uh, is going to be the Google Classroom work. And what's been great to see is the number of pupils that have been engaging with the Google Classroom. Now, if you cast your mind back to the first lockdown that we had between March and June, a lot of materials were kind of just getting uploaded to the Google Classroom and kids were finding their way through it. 
Since then, the school has embarked on a huge amount of training for staff to make sure that they've got their skill levels as high as they can be so that we can start to engage in dynamic learning online. Uh, many staff are offering live lessons uh, where they're doing face-to-face -face kind of consultation live meetings with pupils. They're also uploading video explanations and tutorials um, and narrated PowerPoints with their audio description over the top of it, all in an attempt to support the learning that's taking place um, at home. So what we would encourage you to do is to give your children a pat on the back and say well done for engaging and to continue to keep engaging. We, we offer uh, a daily attendance check for all pupils. This is just a wee way of us being able to, say, to see that pupils have been online and been engaging with the class. We then ask staff across the school to, to give up uh, a wee bit of time to flag up pupils who are maybe causing a couple of concerns so that we can reach out to you and just say, listen, we haven't seen this child online. Is everything okay? Did have IT issues? Is there anything that we can do to help and support? So the, the idea is that we get as many pupils engaging in remote learning um, as possible and, and through your help we're managing to achieve that. So well done. Um, you will notice that with the online learning there is an awful lot of work uh, that goes into the lessons and information has been shared with all the classes regarding the structure of the day. If people are still confused about that, um, then what I would suggest is the first thing is if you can go into the year group class, there's a second year class for your pupil and there's a letter from me from the start of January that breaks down everything in terms of what the school day should look like um, and also there are guides that are on the classroom in terms of how to get materials uploaded from pupils and submitted to members of staff. So a kind of wee ready reckoner there to support your young people in their Google Classroom. We try to, as much as possible, replicate the school day. Um, so we have timetabled sessions where members of staff are actively uh, going back and forward with young people. Uh, and we do this on an odd week and an even week basis. So in an odd week, we concentrate on periods one, three, five, and on an even week, we concentrate on periods two, four, and six. And what this means is that instead of having one period and having six or seven of them in a day, they have um, three double periods in a day. And on a Monday and Tuesday, they've got the period seven, which makes it a little bit longer. But then over the space of two weeks, they get their full entitlement to their entire curriculum. Now, this has got lots of advantages and that it means that children can spend quite a bit of time online with their teacher at the same time and they can get into a back and forward, a bit of a dialogue, so that the, any needs that the children have got in terms of their learning can be addressed there and then. So we would encourage children where possible to get online at the start of that double period, tell the teacher that they're there and then get ready to start getting into that back and forward with the teacher. Now we do know that not all young people can access IT at home at the same time. We're aware that a lot of parents are juggling home life and work life and that you know resources like IT are limited. Uh, so some pupils are getting on later in the day and of course that's absolutely fine. We encourage and support that as long as people know that they can reach out and get help when uh, you know when they get online, email the teachers, put a message into the classroom and then the next day the teacher can respond to that. Okay. Um, now, you may have noticed that some of the pupils have started to get live lessons with the direct face-to-face. -face. Um, these are always a bit of a challenge because the teacher ends up talking much like I am just now to camera without seeing people at the other end of it. Uh, and to make the best out of this um, process, what we would encourage pupils to do is put the camera on, put the microphone on and start to engage with the teacher. Um, we know that this is really, really uncomfortable. It's awkward. We, we do appreciate that. But the sooner pupils get used to it, the, the better it is. And what we find is that our senior pupils are actually quite comfortable with it. And this leads to better um, engagement from them. And it is also starting to improve what they're learning in the class because some of those subtle details get picked up by that back and forward conversation. So please encourage your young people, if there is a live lesson that's taking place, to put the camera on, um, put the microphone on, and, and start talking to the teacher. Now, no pupil would ever be penalized for not turning their camera and microphone on. However, it does help with the process a little bit if they can. Um, lots of you have also signed up to the Guardian emails. Um, the Guardian emails come out once a week. Uh, they are systems generated from Google themselves. Um, and what they do is they highlight the work that pupils have been given and the work that's still outstanding 
for a pupil. If you're not signed up for the Guardian email and would like to be signed up for the Guardian email, then it's not a problem. What to do is just send me a wee email at the email address that's on the screen with your name, the your child's class, uh, and the name of, of your child, and then we can get uh, your email address added to the system so that you get a weekly update um, on what they're, they're doing on a week-to-week -week basis. Sometimes you'll see deadlines within the Google Classroom for pupils, um, and that's really just a kind of guide to, to show that work is getting uploaded on a regular basis. Uh, we do not want to try and overburden pupils, and what we try to avoid as much as possible is setting work for pupils that they've got to take away out with that dedicated time that they have on uh, with their teacher. So sometimes if you see that, or oh, something's due next week, it could just be a teacher flagging up. Next week, we're going to be looking at that. Try not to get too worried about, you know, things that are being outstanding that are a wee bit off in the distance. It's just a way, teacher's way of flagging that that's work that we're going to be doing and it'll get completed during the class time. If you find that that's not the case, please get in contact with me and I'll have a look at that for you. Um, now, I'm just flagging up that I put that link on there for Young Minds. I'm going to share that link in the, the wee blurb of this uh, video once we get finished later on and uh, that way you can click on it and get all the help and advice from that. Um, now, in a wee second, I'm going to get Mr. Reid back on. I'm going to disappear for a wee while. Um, Miss Gordon is going to continue on here signing. Um, but again, if you could flag up any questions or comments that you have, I'll store them here and we can address them at the end. Okay, Mr. Reid, let's get you back on. You'll be ready to go, Mr. Reid. Yeah, I'll just open up my PowerPoint just now, Mr. Monaghan. Okay, that's your think. Thank you very much and welcome to our very first online S2 into S3 choices evening, everybody. Um, this is always a highlight of my school year, um, talking to the second year parents, and it's one that I always look forward to. Um, the turnout is always very positive um, and, and it's always a very enjoyable night. And this is very strange. Um, as a teacher, when we talk to an audience, we're used to a response. And, and like Mr. Monaghan said there, um, I am, or we are talking to a screen and a video camera. So I'll try and make this as painless um, and as meaningful as possible as we run through what are the, the most important aspects of um, moving into third year and the, the third year curriculum. Now, as you're aware, Second year pupils currently study um, approximately 14 subjects. Um, and they'll move into third year, which will be um, the final year of the junior phase in their education, um, the broad general education. Um, thereafter, they'll enter the senior phase, which consists of fourth year, fifth year, and sixth year. The numbers in the brackets there indicate the subjects, the maximum number of subjects studied by pupils in those years. In fourth year, um, pupils take seven subjects um, at national level, in fifth year, five subjects, and in sixth year, a maximum of five subjects. As far as third year is concerned, our young people choose eight subjects. And I'm going to talk about that shortly. In terms of the areas of study, the way that we set up the options process for second year into third year ensures that all young people study all modes um, of the curriculum. Those modes being languages, mathematics, which will be the favourite one, I'm sure, of many, sciences, social studies, or humanities, as it's called, technological studies, expressive arts, health and well-being, which include PE, and personal and social education, and religious and moral education. Now, those modes of study are um, come under or are um, covered by um, literacy, numeracy, and health and well-being, which are overarching themes um, which exist um, in the BGE and beyond. Um, and. That's something that, that, that will continue, obviously, as, as, as your young people move into third year. Now, this might be difficult for you to make out, 
And if it is, I can only apologise. But this basically gives you an indication of the curriculum in first year through to sixth year. The important one for your young people and for yourselves is third year. And as you're aware, every school in South Lanarkshire and every secondary school operates on a 33 period week. Different schools operate this differently. And in Calderside Academy, we have one period, we have a 10 minute slot for registration each morning, which accounts for 50 minutes. And that 50 minutes represents one period out of the 33. That leaves us with 32 periods. Those 32 periods are made up as follows. English and maths are five periods each, giving 10 periods. Pupils then do or then study or take a further six courses for three periods each. Each of those courses um, or the total of those courses in terms of periods would be 18 periods, six threes are 18. Now, if you add on English and maths to that, that takes the total up to 28 periods with English and maths, as I said a wee minute ago, being five periods each. That leaves us with four periods. And out of those remaining four periods, two are PE, one is PSE, and one is RME, Religious and Moral Education. And the 33rd period, as I said earlier, is made up of the five 10 minute slots for registration each morning. Well, hopefully that's pretty clear. Now I normally get parents to do a wee quiz at the end to make sure they've been listening. Obviously that's not going to be possible tonight, but hopefully I'm addressing your issues as we go along. Again, that just shares with you um, the third year curriculum. And obviously, other years as, as your youngsters move on, um, pupils in third year are expected to do a language, a science, and a social subject. So English, maths, a language, a science, and a social subject account for five of their eight subjects. And then there's a free choice for the others. This is what the option forum looks like for second year pupils um, indicating their choices for third year. Now, English and maths don't appear here, but that's, that's a said. If you look at the bottom there, English and maths are mentioned under the compulsory subjects. Every young person studies English and maths. And PE, PSE, and RE appear there also. Pupils have to choose one subject from column A, one subject from column B, one subject from column C, and three subjects from column D with a reserve subject. And I'll come back to that just shortly. Every young person in third year, and most young people in third year, I should say, um, will do a language. Um, the only pupils who won't do a language in third year are those pupils who have been identified by the support for learning team or pupil support as benefiting from taking on essential skills. And I'll talk more about essential skills later. So everyone will do French, Spanish or languages for life and work. Languages for life and work is a course that was introduced last year and it's a combination of both languages. Um, and it's designed for, for those young people who might feel that they would struggle doing a discrete language. Column B is the science column. And obviously we have the discrete sciences, biology, chemistry, and physics. Health sector is in there. And again, that was introduced in this last session. Um, and that is designed for people, for young people who maybe are not keen on a discrete science, but obviously we're, in, we're asking young people to choose at least one science. So if you're choosing health sector, our expectation is, and I'm sure Mr. Monaghan would agree, that you're not choosing any other science subject. It's health sector on its own. Column C 
is the humanities column. And you'll notice that business is features in there. Um, humanities is, is sometimes known as social subjects. Um, and business is believed in some areas um, to be a social subject or a humanities subject. But putting business in there um, assists with, with me, uh, assists me with the timetabling process and, and Mr Monaghan, who is also one of the school timetablers. So we have business, geography, history, modern studies and religious, moral and philosophical studies, which can be chosen to be studied in third year as a discrete subject. Column D, there's a whole range of subjects in there. Now, one of two things that I should point out at this moment in time, you'll see accounting has two asterisks next to it. Next to it. Accounting is only available at National 5 level. There is no course for accounting at National 3 or National 4, and therefore accounting would only be appropriate for those young people who realistically would be achieving National 5 in maths when they go into fourth year. Duke of Edinburgh, I'll talk about a little later. Hospitality is only offered at National 4 in S4 and National 5 in S5. EA represents expressive arts. And T, I'm sure you'll expect this, is technology. Now, our young people pick three courses in there and we ask them to indicate a reserve. The reason for that reserve is that as the school timetabler, um, we try our best. We build a new timetable every year. We don't rely on the previous year's timetable and try and fit kids into our structure. We create a new timetable every year. And Mr Monaghan, I'm glad to say, has joined me this year um, worked on the timetable with me for this year um, and we'll, be, we'll do so again. Now, we try our very, very best to give every young person the courses that they would like to do. However, we're dealing with finite resources. We only have so many French teachers. We only have so many biology teachers. We only have so many practical woodworking workshops and therefore each year, at every transition stage, S2 into S3, S3 into S4, 4 into 5 and 5 into 6, at every transition stage, we have to re-interview a small number of pupils and look at an alternative choice. So that will happen for a very small number, um, hopefully, uh, you know, not too many. I have just finished putting in place the curriculum for fourth year, the new, the new fourth year, the current third year, and out of 240 students, I only had to re-interview seven. Um, you can buy a piece of software, which costs two and a half thousand pounds, and the piece of software probably won't match that in terms of efficiency. It's normally round around about 10, 12 um, pupils that have to be re-interviewed at best. So we will do our best to meet your child's needs, but unfortunately, a very, very, very small number of pupils will have to be re-interviewed and therefore that reserve subject for that purpose is very important. We have two specialised courses and I've mentioned them briefly earlier um, for S3 pupils. Essential Skills. Essential Skills is a course that's delivered by our wonderful Support for Learning team, uh, which is led by Mrs Steele, and it's for those young pupils or those young people who would require support in terms of literacy and numeracy, which would enable them to further engage with their wider curriculum. In other words, the other subjects that they're doing. Um, it's possible for essential skills to run from th in third year and in fourth year. And the majority of young pupils who are identified as, as, as being appropriate to take essential skills um, continue into fourth year with that. Duke of Edinburgh is something I'm sure you've heard of. Um, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, this is the third year that we've run Duke of Edinburgh. Um, there's a cap of 16 pupils um, and there are certain criteria attached to, to those pupils who will be selected for Duke of Edinburgh. More to follow on that. 
mention these courses briefly, Languages for Life and Work, which is the Languages Faculty, and Health Sector, which is the Science Faculty, were introduced this session. Duke of Edinburgh was introduced um, in 1920. Um, this is the third session for Duke of Edinburgh. Mr Richardson, who, if of any pupils watching this, um, I hope you're not sleeping yet, um, or you haven't fallen asleep listening to me, um, but Mr Richardson, Mr Richardson and Miss MacDonald, who are both members of the PE department, deliver Duke of Edinburgh, and that's one of the, the six three-period-a-week subjects. Um, there's information there which is specific to Duke of Edinburgh and pupil selection. A couple of points that I would want to make. One that I've mentioned earlier is that there's a maximum number of 16 pupils, um, and that's down to the procedures and the events that uh, under normal circumstances are undertaken with Duke of Edinburgh, the expedition, and so on. Um, there's a possibility that if, that's, if we have 25 um, pupils who would like to do Duke of Edinburgh, then Mr Richardson and Miss MacDonald will conduct a wee interview um, and those who are deemed most appropriate uh, will be chosen for that. It's really important to note that in order to be, to have any chance at all of being selected, um, the kit, pupils bringing PE kit is an absolute must. So your kit record um, in your second year has to be exceptional. You have to be somebody who can be relied upon to bring their kit um, every week to PE. There's no point in choosing Duke of Edinburgh if you can't be relied upon to bring your kit, if you don't like physical um, activity, because that is a huge part of the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. Now, that will be one of the eight subjects that third-year pupils, 16 third-year pupils will undertake. When those pupils who are undertaking Duke of Edinburgh, and it's at the bronze bronze level, um, when they get to the end of third year, all pupils as they move in to fourth year from third year drop one of their third year subjects. That won't be the case for those 16 young people who are taking Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of Edinburgh award is the subject they will drop and they will continue with the remaining seven S3 courses into fourth year, for those to be delivered at national level. Again, four aspects of Duke of Edinburgh there. The volunteering aspect, where young people are expected to undertake um, voluntary work in the community. Physical aspect, skills development, and obviously it's, it culminates with an expedition, um, which is something, weather permitting, um, goes ahead, and weather permitting, the young people enjoy um, and that's certainly been the case. It's only, well, we've run Duke of Edinburgh for more than two years, but it was only two years ago it was introduced as part of the formal third year curriculum where pupils could opt for it, and that's been a real success. In terms of choosing subjects um, for, for third year, um, this is a quote that, 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 that I really like. Um, if you take a second just to have a wee read at that. You know, we have... 1,350 young people in Calderside Academy or thereabouts. The vast majority of those young people, the vast, vast majority are a credit to themselves, their families and the local community. Um, but they're all different and they all have different skills. And just because they have different skills um, doesn't mean that one is better than another. What's important is that young people get the opportunity to develop the skills that they already have, to develop new skills. and What's absolutely crucial for us as teachers is that they work to the very best of their ability. Any young person who fully applies himself, um, that will always be good enough for, for teachers, um, for me, for you as parents, I'm sure. Um, and that's something that, that, you know, obviously is very, very important. Um, I was brought up um, to, to learn or to know that you have to work for what you get, um, and you get nowhere in life, my dad always said, you get nowhere in life um, without hard work, and that's very true. In terms of, of progression, and I've mentioned this before, 
um, young people continue their broad general education and the personal personalization aspect comes into the comes from the three free choices that they make we'll study eight subjects covering all modes there will be more work in school and more homework which i'm sure the young people sitting watching will be delighted about um, but that again varies from subject to subject um, but it goes without saying and i mentioned to work hard in order to achieve you know hard work reaps rewards you only get what you work for but attendance in the, in the 14 years i've been at calder side attendance is a weak concern um, you know we need young people in school if they're going to achieve their potential and obviously at the moment nobody's in school other than a very small um, number of pupils for very good reasons but in order for any young person to achieve their full potential being in school um, and attending every day uh, is very important which I, I, i'm sure you'll agree when it comes to making a choice there are there are good reasons for making a choice um, if you're able in a subject if you enjoy the subject and these two things can go hand in hand um, and although you know a teacher has a huge impact obviously on the enjoyment um, of the young person um, but you know I'll mention teachers again in a wee second but you know obviously the career path um, that requires a particular subject and those those are three very very important reasons it's also important to say that young people should keep as many doors open in terms of career as possible and that's to be honest with you part of the reason that we've structured the the, the, the option form in the way that we have although we've also included an element of, of pupil choice um, and make that decision after you've spoken to your pupil support teacher you know your subject teachers obviously the, the, the parents afternoon um isn't going ahead um but hopefully your reports will convey that information in written form and this may come as a surprise but talk to your parents i know that you youngsters think your parents are just old people that don't know anything and we're never your age the reality is they've got a wealth of experience and advice that they can offer you and um, so please use their support relatives as well you know people who are in certain career areas in certain jobs um next door neighbors friends of the family um, can also offer advice and support the careers advisor um sds worker skills development scotland is also available and obviously um last and hopefully not least as um, individuals in the senior management team in terms of bad reasons for a choice please 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 don't take a subject just because your friends taking it or your friends are taking it um don't take a subject because you like a particular teacher you know choosing chemistry because you like dr pearson and that's perfectly understandable because dr pearson is a wonderful teacher um but we have four physics teachers and there is no guarantee and can't be a guarantee that you would get dr pearson so you know the, the the individual the personality shouldn't come into your, your choice and equally don't choose or you know avoid choosing a subject because you dislike a particular teacher um teachers are individuals they have different styles and different ways of teaching um you will have your own opinions but you know you have to think about where your abilities lie where your interests lie and what's going to suit your career purpose um you know and this is one that crops up i'm taking that because it's easy there is no such thing as an easy subject subjects are easy if you sit back and don't do anything um our expectation and the expectation of your parents and carers and hopefully your own expectation is that that you know you would sit back and take it easy and you'll strive you'll strive to achieve your best what girls and boys do things have changed considerably over the years um when i was at school which is a long time ago and i started secondary school in 1978 boys get technical and girls got home economics um that is no longer the case thankfully um and that shouldn't be considered that shouldn't enter into your thoughts 
in any way whatsoever. And don't be dropping a pencil from a height onto your option form and choosing that way. Um, and I know that maybe sound a wee bit flippant, but in working with young people for, for 34 years, um, it never ceases to amaze me, the discussions that I have around options and some reasons for young people choosing what they've chosen. Some useful websites there in terms of, of you know, supporting online learning. And, and, and Mr. Monaghan mentioned that earlier and it's some other useful websites. But there's, there's BBC Bite Size and there's been adverts on the television, um, you know, or, or in BBC um, promoting BBC Bite Size, which is a highly regarded resource. There's also Planet Plus, and that's an SDS, a Skills Development Scotland website. There's the, Scot the SQA website. Um, Education Scotland website, and there's also My World of Work, which is specifically geared at career areas and subject choices. Um, I hope some of those, if you access them, will be useful, if not all of them. And finally, if ever a quote was appropriate, um, this one is, I am too positive to be doubtful too optimistic to be fearful and too determined to be defeated. When you take into account the last year that we've all had, which has been challenging to the extreme, and I'm hoping that we can now see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel as the speed of vaccines has increased. Um, but, you know, it's been a real challenge for all of us, um, particularly our young people who we want back in school. Um, and the sooner the better. And I've, I've been so impressed in terms of the current third year, my year group, in terms of their engagement and phone calls I've made to their parents about the resilience and the positivity that, that young people are showing. Um, and in the current circumstances, education is always crucially important, and I'm sure you would all, you would all agree with that. However, for me, there's something that, that maybe surpasses that at this moment in time due to the current circumstances, and that is the emotional well-being of young people and obviously of adults and parents and so on as well. Um, it's an extremely challenging time um, and we really look forward to seeing you all back in school. That, you'll be glad to know, finishes my presentation. I'm sorry if it went on too long and if it was a bit dry, but you normally in this, I have been used to, as we all have, talking to an audience and getting a feeling of, of you know, hitting the mark in terms of their responses. Um, that's not been possible for obvious reasons. So I hope that that's clarified some issues. I hope that's been of support. And thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, the first we've done something like the first time that this has been done, um, and I'm not saying that in future years um, I would repeat this as opposed to meeting parents. In fact, I definitely wouldn't, but there certainly is a place for online learning, um, and we'll see where that takes us in the future. Take care, everyone, and, and thank you for, for giving up your very valuable time. Look after yourselves. Cheers. Thank you, Mr. Reid. Um, I hope you found that useful there. The Mr. is going through the, the the full presentation there. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I've heard him doing that presentation last year as well. And I think he has hit the mark. So well done, Mr. Reid. Uh, a couple of wee bits and pieces the, that, that I've got to go through just, uh, just to finish things off. Uh, I'll ask you again, if you want to ask any questions, you can do so uh, in the chat. Uh, for the, the YouTube video and that way we can address them. So if there is anything that you're thinking about, anything that you want to ask while we're online just now, you can do that. Um, I want to just take you through the options form itself. Mr. talked about the process and it's a little bit different this year. Normally you would have had an interview or your pupils would have had an interview with uh, Skills Development Scotland already. Uh, about 70% of them were done before Christmas. There was uh, a number of them still to be done uh, after Christmas. So they've been making phone calls to speak to young people. If that hasn't happened yet, then they'll be doing that next week as well. We've had to bring the option process forward a little bit. Mr. Reid was talking about the, the time scale to, to get a bespoke timetable in place. And to do that, 
we need to have the options in place. And the sooner we can start that process and start to generate the those options, then the the sooner we can start to get the that that timetable constructed. Um, as he's already said, it takes a wee bit of effort to get as many of the options for your children in as we possibly can. And we do that by building a bespoke timetable every single year. Okay, now we've got one question from a parent just now. Okay, so can we recap what health sector is? So health sector is a course that's run by the sciences. It's a little bit chemistry, a little bit physics, a little bit biology, and it's really targeted towards kids who don't necessarily want to go down a, you know, a discrete chemistry, physics, or biology route. It is targeted towards people who might be thinking about a career at some point in the, the health sector, um, and that would give them a wee bit of an introduction. Okay, another question's come through. Um, when is the subject choice deadline? Okay, so the, the official deadline is going to be, and I think I'll just check my calendar because I don't want to give you a wrong date, um, is Friday the 26th. Okay, the option form is going to go live on Monday and I'm going to share that uh, with you. But to be honest with you, even if the, your option forms go in just now, there is still time to change those options. But once we've got the bulk of them in, it does make it easier for us to start that timetabling process. Um, so the deadline for it is the 26th, uh, with the aim of getting most of them in at that point. And then, like I said, if there are any wee changes that have to be made, then, then we can do that. I'll bring Mr. Reid back in in case he wants to add anything else to that. Um, parents, that no. Yeah, oh, Mr. Reid? Yeah, um, there's, you know, changes can be made. Um, there's not an issue with that, but once once all the options are and once that deadline is reached, you and I then put a, Mr Monaghan and I then put a, a curriculum in place for the new third year. Um, thereafter, it becomes more difficult. And although we would look at changes, they couldn't be guaranteed. And saying, but, but I have to say, and I, I know I'm repeating myself, that no options can be guaranteed. That's the nature of the process. Although I would expect that the vast, vast, vast majority of young people get the courses that they would they would want to do okay perfect uh, a couple of questions coming in about getting the powerpoint uh, for parents and pupils to review we can make the powerpoint available for you uh, this video will also remain on youtube if people want to go back in and re-watch it which uh, would be <laughs> highly recommended <laughs> all go back and, and, and watch and it extremely surprising uh-huh yeah um <laughs> Right, um, and I'm trying to see other questions come through. There is always a wee bit of a lag. If any more questions come through, I'll, I'll, I'll pop them up. Um, while we're waiting for any more questions to come through, I'll show the options form just now. So when your children are, are putting their options in online, we would normally do it as a paper version and your pupil support teacher would sit down um, with individuals and, and go through that. Um, given the current climate that we're in, that's not going to be possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate those options first. And if there is an issue with the options, if something doesn't look right, then pupil support teacher would maybe reach out, give you a wee call to discuss those options. Um, the link goes live on Monday um, and it's a dead simple form. At the top of it, name of pupil, the class, name of pupil support teacher, and that's just so that we can group them together and give those options to the pupil support teacher for them to review. Your home postcode, that's just to verify that the person that's putting the options in is who they say that they are. Um, and then the first column there is the languages one. And this would just be picking one from those four. Mr. Reid's already discussed about languages for life and work and essential skills. Essential skills, if that's something that we recommend that your child should be put forward for, we would discuss that uh, with you. Um, the sciences, the four choices that are there, pick one from the following. Same with humanities, uh, including business and RMPS. Um, and then the, the big column at the end, where pupils can select three. Now, I've got to give you a wee bit of a health warning with this one. The form doesn't allow me to only accept three answers. So what it will do is it will accept four, five, six, seven. If you click them all, I'll accept them, but it won't help us get the options in. So only three from this part here. Below that, you've got the same list again, but this is where you would select the reserve option. Uh, and you only pick one from that list. Okay, please don't pick anything that you've already selected in the, the list that's a wee bit higher up because you really, really want that subject. It's not going to, to record it twice for you. All it means is that we don't have a backup for you. Um, once that's done and you click it through, 
um, you'll get a wee message at the end of it to say, thanks very much, your options are submitted, and that goes into the system within the school. So it's all done online. Now, we know that not everyone's got access to, to appropriate IT, and if some people find it difficult to get the option forms filled in in this format, then what to do is give us a call in at the school and, and we can have a look at that, uh, filling it in for you and recording it that way. We don't want this to be a barrier to anyone getting their options in. Okay, um, so let's go back and see about the questions coming through. Uh, so one science is chosen in column B, if we allow numbers, two science subjects based from column D. Okay, so that's a, yeah, a particular one. So if you want to pick more than one science, then that's how you would do it. You pick one science from the science column and then the additional sciences from the later column. Um, and that's how you would get uh, those in as well. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions that I can answer online. Now, I've got a request um, for people, as Mr. Reed and I have said, this is our first time doing anything like, like this. We hope we don't have to have this. We would rather have you in the building and discuss these sorts of things with you face to face. We would love to have parents evenings where we could have you in the building and you'd be able to talk to the teachers about your child's progress. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case either. We're not allowed to do that at present. Uh, next week, the options form is coming, not the options form, sorry, the report cards are coming out for all second year pupils and they're coming out in the post. They're due to get printed in the school office tomorrow and posted, so you should have them for the start of next week. And then you're going to have in the region of about 10, 11 days to get the option form into us. Now, I've just sent a link into the chat. And this is just a wee way for us to get a wee bit of feedback on how you think tonight has went. If you've thought that it's been useful, comment on that. If you think that it hasn't been useful or the audio hasn't been great, then please comment on that as well. Uh, and if there are things that we can do to make it a little bit better, uh, then let us know. Um, we would rather put these sessions on and have them be useful uh, than not at all, okay? So if you can have a wee click on that, it will take you, I reckon, about 30 seconds to a minute to complete. Okay, and I think that is pretty much uh, me. Yeah, I think so. Um, that just leaves us to say then, good night, folks. Thank you very much uh, for for coming online. Uh, thanks very much for taking part. It's been great to see you all online. Um, and we will see you soon. Oh, one last question I think has come through. When the option choices will be confirmed? I um, effectively assume that the option choices are confirmed unless we get back in contact with you. That's going to be the easiest way of doing that. Um, it's not going to be feasible to, to get in contact with every single pupil. We're hoping that um, by the time the option choices are confirmed, we're going to be able to get pupils back into the school and hand them something, but we don't know uh, at this stage. So just assume that once they're completed, they're confirmed until we say to you otherwise. Would you agree, Mr. Reid? Yes, that's that's absolutely spot on. Um, and as I say, we hope the vast majority of, of young people, and that hap this happens every year, the vast majority get the, the subjects that, that they want. But, you know, if there's not an issue you won't hear from us, if there's a wee change has to be made, and it's not drastic, remember, because when, when your youngster moves into fourth year, um, when they get to the end of fourth year, they go from seven subjects to five for, for fifth year, and therefore they lose another two subjects. Um, so it's not it's not a major issue, and it's a very 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 small number. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Uh, just the last wee point: a couple of people asking about having conversations with particular teachers. Uh, that's not always going to be possible. But if there is a particular concern, get in contact with myself or Mr. Reed, and we'll see what we can work out. If there's someone who's got a particular career path in mind, and it would be useful to speak to someone in a particular subject area, then we'll see what we can do. But at present, it's not going to always be possible to have, you know, teachers talking to, to all parents about all, all subject choices. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's just the case just now. Uh, where will the option forms be posted? It'll be posted on Google Classroom on Monday morning. It'll go live at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. Okay, folks. Right. Good night. Thanks very much for your Thank attendance. Thank you very much for giving up your time. Okay. And we'll see you. And we'll see you at some point further down the line. Thank you. Cheers then. Thank you. Bye now.